dog. Hi, my name is Tyler, and this is After Touch Audio. Today, I want to go ahead and talk about background editing. And while it might not be the most exciting topic to talk about, it is one of the most highly employable skills that you can have as a sound designer. In this video, we'll go over a very quick sort of industry standard template for both stereo and 5.1. And we'll also be breaking down five <laughs> of the actual um, BGB designs that I've gone ahead and done here. Before we start, however, if you would like to go ahead and support the channel, please consider checking the link in the description below where we have royalty-free sound effects for your professional use. Backgrounds are one of the most important elements in a film or video game. They help provide depth to your scenes, assist with hiding dialogue edits, and give a bed of noise for your effects and dialogue to fade into without them having to be like holes in your actual dialogue. So here is a BG template for you to go ahead and use that is widely industry standard. It utilizes four mono tracks and six stereo tracks. Now in a stereo template, it's pretty straightforward. The mono goes center and the stereos go to your left and rights. Um, but in a 5.1 system, it would you would have the four mono tracks go to your center speaker, your four first stereo tracks go to your left and your right, and then your last two stereo tracks go to your uh, rear surround speakers. That's basically how all the templates are set up and, and how people like to receive it. Now effectively what ends up happening is as you transition from one scene to the next, you will have a duplicate of those tracks just below it. Now what that means is I can actually go ahead and cut the first scene on the first track, the second scene on the second track. And then we just checkerboard like this throughout the actual film. And that will pretty much be how your BG edit goes. If you would like to go ahead and actually mix them yourself or, or you are the acting uh, re-recording mixer, you can actually go ahead and create three group tracks. That's two, but three. <laughs> So what you can end up doing is creating a BGA mix and a BGB mix, and those there will go to your BGA and BGB groups. Then those go into a master BG folder, and that's what you would actually export from if they did need so a uh, just a BG stem for whatever reason. Pretty much how you set up a BG template, it's pretty straightforward. It uses four mono tracks and six stereo tracks, and that's effectively how all mixers uh, usually like to receive their BG tracks. Okay, so let's break down the very first BG track. So just because you have access to 10 actual tracks doesn't mean you actually have to use all of them. Like, for example, this one here, I'm only using five tracks rather than using all 10. Five was the right amount of sounds that I actually needed. And effectively, um, sometimes it's about more using the right sounds than filling out all of the tracks that you have access to. So if you find that five is working for you, then use five. If you find that the three is working for you, use three. Uh, you don't need to use all 10 tracks across each markers. Um, although a re-recording mixer might like that, it gives them maybe too many options. So then uh, build your VGs around what is working for the scene rather than just filling out the tracks. So the tracks I'm using for this um, forest redesign is actually just a couple different frequency ranges of wind, um, some birds, and some leaves rustling around. And that kind of gave me the nice overall sort of background tone that I was looking for. Okay, so that works. Um, now what we can actually do is sweeten this up a bit more by adding in some effects. So for the effects layer, I actually went ahead and added a distant river or waterfall type uh, sound, as well as just some additional birds that can be panned around and actually um, located. So let's go ahead and throw in the actual effects for this track and let's see how this dynamically changes the Bee Gees. Okay, so that sounds really, really nice. It's a nice sort of bed of background noise for the actual dialogue or effects to kind of fade into. Um, so let's move on to a light city. So effectively, this one here is infinitely more busy than a pretty dead forest. So we use a lot more tracks. I found that I didn't need as many mono tracks as I did need stereo tracks because there's a lot of city stuff going around. But what I've gone ahead and utilized here is different intensities of traffic, some sirens, I've used exterior crowds, park ambiences, and some sidewalk feet, all to really help build this lush sort of detailed uh, background layer. So let's listen to all of those layers in isolation so you can kind of see how the whole picture sort of um, comes together.
You see how rich and detailed that actually is? There's a lot of depth in that, but we can actually spice this up by actually adding in some more effects. For the effects layers, they're not really BGs, they're more hard effects. There's two actual, like te technically considered background effects, which I added in a car horn and a siren towards the end. But I've also cut the feet to make sh to, to show you how this kind of works more in a um, uh, full scene context. Lots of depth, lots of richness there. There's a lot of effects that just kind of stand on their own. And that's kind of what we're looking for when we're talking about redesigning BGs is you want to have the a lot of layers and a lot of depth to you to actually your sound design rather than just having it be one or two tracks and stuff like that. You add in each element on its own. So like the people, the traffic, the winds and atmospheres, you have them all isolated so that way you can actually layer them up and you can actually go ahead and mix them how you want. If you want more traffic, well, you have the traffic there to move up. But if you only have two or three tracks, then all of a sudden when you bring the traffic up, you're also bringing the people and all the other at atmospheres up as well. So having them isolated like that into specialized tracks is really, really helpful. Okay, so let's move on to possibly one of my favorite ones I did on this trip, but effectively it is just a generic sort of beach scene. I have this split up into a couple different layers. I have have the wind of varying amounts on their own thing. I have um, the ocean perspectives as their own thing. And then I also have things like um, uh, ocean birds, like seagulls. And for this year, we use Canadian seagulls because, well, I'm Canadian, so they might sound a little different if you're from um, uh, the US where they have more of these like squawky sort of gulls that I'll play a sound here. Uh, but these are Canadian seagulls, so they're, it's a Canadian BG, so. So you might have noticed the waves that I have in the Bee Gees don't sync with the picture. That's because they're less, those are more of an effect than an actual Bee Gees. So that's something that I would actually cut in as an effect, which I actually happen to have done here. So effectively, the only effects that I have in this to kind of spice this up is actually the synchronization of the waves. And that really helps add that extra bit of motion to the film. But really, when you're cutting Bee Gees, you're just cutting things that are not specific to the picture in terms of like they're on picture. If it's on picture and you can uh, pan it around, it's more of an effect than it's an actual BG. So let's go ahead and play the entire thing uh, with all of the actual panning and uh, with the waves and the birds and all that stuff and kind of create the more bigger picture. So birds are actually one of those effects that you can actually throw in to help fill dead space. So when we're talking and stuff like that, and when we have a piece of dialogue that maybe um, there's a big gap between stuff, you can actually throw a bird in there and it will help fill out the space and make it doesn't seem like such an awkward pause. And those are really, really helpful when you want to go ahead and just worldization stuff as well. So like, for example, when you hear seagulls, you immediately think beach. You don't think forest, you would cut a forest bird there. But selectively placing birds and stuff like that is actually one really cool way just to help like localize where you are without actually having to be super specific with your ambiences. So for this example, we actually have a residential area, which is a little harder to uh, cut because it depends on where you are. 
Um, if your if your residential area is next to like a highway or something like that, you'll cut more highway traffic. If it is more up in the mountains, you'll cut more wind, maybe some birds. So effectively what we have here is I've chosen to be less traffic focused because we did one uh, prior and more uh, residential neighborhood area. So there's a lot more birds in this um, uh, recording than, than anything else. But effectively I found I think four tracks works quite well. So let's just play this here and uh, see how it sounds. We can actually spice this up more with BGs and or other sort of effects and stuff like that. But effectively what I can do here is actually increase the amount of um, neighbor presence. So what I actually did in my effects is I cut a lawnmower and weed whacker to show that, you know, people are outside working on their lawns or something. You know, create a background story of something that's happening off screen rather than it just being something like, oh, more traffic, more this, more that. Try adding like things that wouldn't be considered BGs in with the BGs and see if that works. Awesome. So, so that worked out quite well. Again, this one here is much more of a lighter BG than than most if you wanted to have like um more of an urban area, less suburban area, you can actually go ahead and throw in some distant traffic or some car buys or anything that will go ahead and help this here. So room tones are one of those things that you're trying to just design the sound of the room for. Um, you can add things like if you're in a party club, you can add the, the, the sound of people moving in your Bee Gees and all that fun stuff. But effectively what you're looking for in just like a generic sort of interview space, which is this is more of a living room, is just the sound of the room. Everything else you can kind of cut on effects, but you can actually go ahead and cut things like uh, crickets in your room tones. You can cut things like uh, dog barkings, but uh, for, for the most part, I actually put the dog barkings in the effects. So we'll, let, let's, let's just have a listen to the room tone itself. Just a nice living room atmosphere with a kitchen in the background type thing. So let's let's actually build this room tone up layer by layer by layer so you can see how everything is kind of put together in this very wide and um, broad spectrum sort of um, noise profile. So let's actually go ahead and isolate each of these layers on their own and I'll just have this uh, looping. As you can see, we cover a nice range of frequencies and stuff like that. It's, it's really meant there just to complement the dialogue. Um, each room tone is very, very different. You might have some big open air rooms where it's less high frequencies, more low frequencies. If you have a more smaller room, it's much more tight. So you have a much more broadband frequencies. Um, but really listen to the sounds of different rooms and stuff like that. And then you'll get a better idea in terms of how room recordings actually uh, come to be life. But if you want to spice these up a bit more, you can actually do that. And what I did was I added the sound of a ticking clock as well as uh, the dog barking from outside. So now we effectively have gotten an outside room. So that's effectively how I, I, I built this room out. We have the nice dog barking from outside. And don't be afraid to actually go ahead and use plugins to generate things that are outside and inside. I use a plugin called Altiverb quite a bit um, when I want to go ahead and make things sound from outside to inside. So if, for example, we are transitioning from the outside area where there, where, where there was that dog barking down the street, I can actually go ahead and add Altiverb to that dog track, bring it in to an interior room, and now we have the same dog that was barking outside as we do inside and it ha and it carries this nice sort of cohesive cohesiveness with your actual uh, BGs themselves. Do the same thing with birds, do the same thing with the uh, lawnmower outside. You can do it with effectively anything. Um, but let me just show you the very quick preset that I used for that. So yeah, I effectively use this preset all the time. It is a wonderful, wonderful preset. It is basically the speaker is on the outside, the microphone's on the inside, and both windows are closed. If you want more detail, this there's actually a better uh, preset for that where you can have both windows open or just one window open. It's, it's very, very, very helpful for that kind of stuff. So where do I go ahead and get all these files? It's like, well, 
you can actually go ahead and record all your ambiences yourself, but that's not always um, the case. You can't always grab specific ambiences that you need. Like if you need specific birds and stuff like that and you don't live within that area, then you need to possibly go ahead and either hire some other people within other areas to go ahead and sample those stuff for you, or you can look online for samples. There's a plethora of actual field recordings and stuff like that. Some of my absolute favorites, like absolute essentials to me, are is the Quiet Planet stuff. Um, you can get those on the uh, Boom Library. The Thomas Rex collection, he's got an amazing collection of just super hyper detailed ambiences that are all exteriors and stuff like that. And then one of my all-time favorite libraries, it's actually relatively affordable, it's called LA Skylines. It's got this amazing amount of detail. Um, they basically went up the skyline and captured ambiences from the third floor, the fifth floor, the eighth floor, the twelfth floor. So you get further and further distance of city stuff, which is perfect to lay in with like, for example, uh, an urban background or a suburban background, just to create that distance of a of a city and kind of isolates you in, in those areas. Uh, if you would like to actually go ahead and participate in this challenge, it is going to be available on my channel next week. I will actually have all of these uh, clips within Discord. And we do Discord challenges there every single week. Um, and yeah, so if you would like to go ahead and support the channel, please consider uh, visiting those links in the, in the description below where we have the Discord channel and we have um, sound effects created just for you. So anyways, thank you so much for watching and go make some noise.